Hello, this is Linda with No Frills ASMR. I'm back today to talk about more football. I thought we could talk about terminology from football. Um, but before I start, I should say this is an ASMR style of video. Um, it's really meant more to relax, to maybe even fall asleep. Um, but I also am trying to just learn new things. And so before the video, I spend a little time trying to learn about a subject. And then I come on here and try to share the information I've learned. So I'm not an expert. Um, and I don't always know, you know, <laughs> everything correctly. I try. Um, now this, I've actually been, you know, I watched quite a bit of football. So since I started thinking about doing terminology while watching, I've started to really pay attention to what the announcers are saying. And, you know, more and more <laughs> you hear things, you go, I don't know what that means. So I took a few notes and um, so I thought we'll try to talk about it. So hopefully that'll be fun. Just holding this football has made me think I should do one on the football, like the history of the ball itself. They call it the pigskin because I think a lot of times it's historically made of pigskin. This one feels like it's rubber. And this is not an NFL. This is a national collegiate <laughs> athletic association. I'm going to go with. <laughs> I think that might be right. You know what else I could do a video? Boy, you guys. I could do just on, um, what do you call these? Oh, well. <laughs> I can't think of the word. <laughs> Should I start over? We're not going to. Anyway, okay. So there's a football just for fun. I'm not really <clears throat> going to talk about that today. It's just for looks. Maybe I'll move it out so we don't get too much shadow here. But I want the... Uh... There's a term I should know. Threads? The... No. The... Okay, in the comments somebody told me. <laughs> okay, so that's an example of the kind of really intelligent content <laughs> you're going to get today. No, really, most things I kind of have. Okay, so I made up this football field that you may have seen in a previous video I did that was the basics of football. And so in that video, we learned that there's 11 players on each team on the field at a time, that the offense has control of the ball, and the defense is trying to defend, keep them from running the ball in to get a touchdown. Um, and then you also have special teams that come out when there's a punt. Uh, and then other things, the coin toss, um, the line of scrimmage. We'll discuss the line of scrimmage, I think, again. So anyway, that's all in a previous video. And then there's another NFL video that's about the... Um, the teams like um, conferences. So if you're curious about that, it might be good to look at that before as we're going into playoffs because it is kind of useful if you don't know that. So anyway, okay. So I don't really know where to begin, but let's just start. <laughs> so I don't have, you know, a computer or anything. We're just flying off the cuff here. <laughs> And hopefully that'll make it kind of enjoyable. Actually, I'm lying. I have a laptop over... No, not a laptop. This is not what you call a laptop. <laughs> um, iPad. That because I took a few screenshots of some comments that people made on previous videos that I thought maybe at the end we could read to try to understand a little more. Um, sometimes when people put a comment in that has a lot of information. I can't process it, but I think if we read it slowly, we'll be able to understand what they're saying. 
All right, so the first thing, hold on, let me grab. We need players, which means we'll bring back the risk Halo Wars <laughs> and get some guys out of here. Hold on. Okay, let's try to use smaller. Last time I had guys that were too big, but I don't think I need a whole 11, I don't think, but we'll get them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11. Um, I feel like I want to use these because they're smaller, but I don't know if they're going to... Let's see if they show up. They're kind of hard to see, aren't they? I like the reds, but they're, they're large. I mean, look how big. One, two, three... They look like a squid with there's some kind of creature, I don't know. And then these guys are just like soldiers or something. But somebody told me, oh, this guy, we'll use him for the quarterback. Somebody in the comments said he's Master Chief. <laughs> so he'll be our, oh yeah, and we need, we need our referee. He's the referee. So, the first thing that we talked about in the other video, but just so that we, um, uh, um, <laughs> remember, is the line of scrimmage, which is where the ball is set. So, at the beginning of a play, there'll be a line that the referee has marked as the line of scrimmage. And the reason I bring that up is because between, I'm not going to set all these guys up, it'll take too long, but um, between the offense, although I do need Master Chief because he's our quarterback, he's going to be right here. Um, let's pretend like the 40-yard line's our line of scrimmage. So they're going to line up and place the ball. I need something to be a little ball. But the tip of the ball, so right here. Boy, I hope I have this right. I think I have this right. So the line of scrimmage would be here, and the tip of the ball goes on the line of scrimmage. I think that's right. Okay. So the, let's say the line of scrimmage is here, and then this team lines up here, but they can't be like right up on the line of scrimmage. So there is an area, and this is our first term, <laughs> called... Oh, you spell this oh no uh, I think that's right spelling isn't my specialty neutral oh, I need a bigger piece of paper the neutral zone so there is an area and I don't I should have marked how long it how large it is I, it feels to me <laughs> Like it's like maybe a yard, but um, so the football's there. You have the center, I believe he's called. Which, by the way, I think I'm gonna do a video. I know I'm gonna do a video because I need to learn this on the names of all the different positions. But when I started to look it up, it seemed like it might be complicated, so I'll have to do a little more research. But he will have the ball, and he'll be pu putting it through. <laughs> This sounds weird if you don't know. But putting it through his legs, like like he's bent over. <clears throat> and he puts it through his legs, and it goes up to the quarterback, and the quarterback catches it. So he is <clears throat> allowed to be right at the line of scrimmage, but everybody else has to be a little bit back. And that's called the neutral zone. And the thing with the neutral zone <laughs> is that it starts to go into other terms that have to do with penalties. And I think I have to do a video just solely on penalties because once you start getting into that, there's more to it. But one thing is, if one of these defense players, like they have a certain amount of time to snap the ball, and sometimes they'll wait until the very last minute in order, and they'll kind of be 
uh, guys back here running around, running back and forth, or making tiny little moves with their hands and stuff to try to get these guys to think they're going and they'll run. And if they um, go into the neutral zone, then they get a penalty. So these guys are called an offsides. So these guys are trying to draw them offsides. And that actually is another term that they use a lot in football. They'll say draw off. Oh no, I can't fit it. Sides. Okay. So they're trying to, the offense tries to draw the defense offside by kind of holding off on the plate to the last minute and doing movements that make them think they need to go and block right away. Not block. That's not the right word. Anyway, so they tried offsides. Okay. And then, I think this is right. <laughs> if, by accident, this team, the offense, moves too quickly, thinking that the ball's been snapped and that the play is underway, and they get drawn into the um, neutral zone, that's called... Gosh, I hope this is right. A false start. So this one is defense. And you can correct me in the comments. And this one is offense. Okay. Oh, I know what else. Okay. These are actually penalties. So this would be in a penalty video if I ever do one. But I'll just say one other thing. If the defense not only goes into the neutral zone, but actually tackles one of these guys, that's a bigger penalty, I think. I think it's a bigger penalty. And it's called... That's right, right, yeah. In... in fraction. So if they actually go as far as to touch one of the offensive players before the play is actually started um, in the past the neutral zone or in the neutral zone, that's an infraction. Okay, I think that's right. Okay, and then, all right, so those are something. <laughs> oh, you know what? I just thought of a term that... Uh, I should have probably okay this kind of football is American football but it's also sometimes called and I think they like to call it this during like Super Bowl they go grid iron football and I always thought grid iron like it meant the guys were strong or something but what it really is the original fields were set up like a grid so you'd have lines this way and you also had lines this way kind of like where the hash marks are now um and so it was called gridiron so if you ever hear gridiron football that's american or canadian i think football and by the way somebody commented about canadian football and i'm i had never even <laughs> heard of it or knew it was different that was so new to me and i think that canadian football might be fun to look into but so gridiron it has to do with the field, actually. Um, all right, let's talk about... Oh, well, I couldn't think of the name of this area during the last video, which is crazy. But I have memory issues sometimes, so forgive me. Um, but this is the end zone. So these two are the end zones, just so we're clear on that. Um, oh, I know. Okay, so sometimes during a play, the, the quarterback has gotten the ball and... Master Chiefs are quarterback. So he's gotten the ball. And some of these guys have run out here. But, okay, wait, I have a few things to go through here. So let me think of the order. Let's first of all say, a lot of times, the guys protecting the quarterback will kind of get into almost a horseshoe pattern around him. And this area that he is in now, where he's, you know, hopefully, I'm running out of index cards, so I have to use these little <laughs> cut-off pieces. 
Okay. Um, it's called The Pocket. And you will hear them say that a lot on broadcast. They'll talk about The Pocket. The Pocket is like his little, hopefully, safe space where these guys are holding off the um, defense from tackling the quarterback. That's called The Pocket. There is no rhyme or reason to how I'm doing this. I'm just thinking of stuff as I go. So let's see. As far as a po oh, I know what else. And I also heard it called when I looked it up because I was double checking. They call it a tackle box, which honestly I had never, I've never heard that. So it, I don't. Have you guys heard that tackle box? I like it. It's a fishing term that I'm familiar with. Anyway, okay. So, um, sometimes the players will, instead of having guys running down here, trying to keep an eye on these, um, guys who are going to try to catch the ball, that's what they're doing. So sometimes they know this guy wants to throw this ball cause they're, you know, later in, I don't know. Anyway, so they all come down here to try to stop him from being able to catch the ball. But other times they will send... Yeah, five of their guys, which, you know, <laughs> is a lot. And they will all try to go in and get this quarterback. And that is called, if you have five, excuse me, hold on. <clears throat> I have to clear my throat. If you have five guys all trying to get at the quarterback at once, and there's better wording for that, I just can't think of it. But I like this word it's a blitz. That's a blitz. And for a while, I think Pittsburgh's um, defense was known for that, and they called it, can you guess, Blitzburg. <laughs> okay. Uh, so let's see. What else about that? I'm trying to think what else there is with the pocket. Um, pocket, pocket. I feel like I'm forgetting something. I can't. Yeah, I can't think of anything else. Okay. Now, I can't remember if in the last video, I'm sure I must have said this, but I'm not sure, that if this could be anybody, basically, if it's the quarterback or a player, but if anybody has the ball and they're running with the ball and they drop the ball or they start to get tackled, but they're not down yet and they drop the ball, that... I'm trying to think if there's any other, um, I think that's it really. It's just that they dropped the ball. Anyway, it's called a, hold on, let me get my, a fumble. And I can't remember if I said that on the last video, but that's what a fumble is, is if there's anybody running with the ball and they drop the ball. And sometimes if they drop the ball and the other team picks it up, Although I guess maybe this could be used for even if their own team, but it's called a recovery. So sometimes they'll say it was fumbled and recovered or something along those lines. Okay, so fumble, recovery. What else, what else? Okay, so sometimes we have Maybe he's bent. Let's straighten him out. Stand up. Okay. Sometimes you'll have the quarterback. They, I think they have a headset in their helmet. They must. Yeah, they do. They do. And so the coaches are giving them plays. Well, two things. And then one thing is sometimes they'll meet up with all the guys. You'll see them all in a circle discussing the play. And this used to be the way football was. They'd all get in a circle and they'd put their arms around each other and they'd discuss the play. You don't see that as much as you used to in football because they're playing hurry up football more, I think is what they call it, or no huddle football. But if you see them all in a group like that talking, that's a huddle. But if there's, they're low on time and they don't want to run the clock 
or if they're just trying to get the momentum of the game going, they might go to what's called no huddle football, where they just are, um, you know, like real quick saying they have code names for their place. So they'll say like, you know, I don't know. What's a code name? I can't even think of something. Jerry Starburst 246. And then all the guys know what that means, you know. But then sometimes they will call a play. So they're thinking, I'm going to pass to to, to just Green Joe here. Joe Green. Hey, that's a football player. Okay, so here is plenty to pass. But the defense kind of thought they're going to do that. So they start really guarding this guy. So now the quarterback can call what's called... audible and audible which means he on the fly I, I want to change that I think what an audible is is they have a play planned they're at they're still at the line of scrimmage and they are planning to run him down here but really quickly they see one of these guys has moved down here now the quarterback all of a sudden says they know what we're up to so he can call an audible and I think I could be wrong, but I think what that means, I could be wrong. <laughs> I think what it is, is then he can say, change, you know, he doesn't say it like in long, but like he's called Starburst 1, 2, 3, 4. And then all of a sudden he says, Bubblicious 3, 3, 0. <laughs> These are not real plays, guys. Don't try them. Don't, don't, what is it they say at the beginning? Don't try this in your own home. Anyway, so then then they hear it and they go, okay, we're switching it. So that's an audible is the quarterbacks changing it on the fly after the play has already been planned or set or whatever you call it. He makes an audible and changes the play call. I think that's a pretty good explanation of that. <laughs> um, oh, and this, the area, oh, I think this is right. Anywhere where the area where you're back, behind the play that's the backfield so when I said like these guys they're running into the backfield you'd think that would be a simple thing to know but now I'm like is it both backfields I guess it is okay um oh I know what I know what when I was watching the other day at the top of your when you're watching a football game broadcast at the top of your screen it might say something like it'll have the scores of the team and then over on the corner it might say like three and third or something along those lines and um, hold on I'm sorry <coughs> I had to cough <laughs> and so what that would mean is that <clears throat> the first the first number stands for how many downs they're at. And if you see the other video we talk about downs, you get four downs. So this would mean they're on their third down. And then the third means it, when you have the line of scrimmage, I don't want to use my, oh, I see more index cards, so I'm okay. All right. So you have your line of scrimmage, and you're trying to make it 10 yards. So one, two, am I going to fit them all? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So th three and third means you're on your third down, and you're three yards away. So you're one, two, three yards. So you're here. So you have three more yards to make it to the um, line of gain. That's another word, line of gain. Okay, hold on. Line of, I'm telling you, this could go on, this video could go on for 100 hours because everything you say, then you're like, oh yeah, that's something else. <laughs> so the line of gain is where you're trying to get to by the end of your fourth down. It is 10 yards from the line of scrimmage is the line of gain. So three and third means you're on your third down and you're three yards away from the line of gain. So if it said two and 
six. That would mean you're on your second down and you're six. One, two, three, four, five, six yards away from the line of gain. Does that make sense? <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that's correct because I actually, I didn't know it. I kept seeing that and I was like, what is that mean so then I look that up okay so the line of gain <clears throat> is used a lot I mean you're gonna hear that a lot um, okay um, what else oh I don't know if I said this or not in the last video but there is a thing they say called and this is like well here first we'll broke the plane so let's get rid of our lines my very accurate and perfectly drawn lines <laughs> let's get rid of that okay so broke the plane is if this guy is trying to score a touchdown I may have said this in the last video but <clears throat> excuse me if the ball even even if his whole body doesn't go over, as long as his knees or elbow haven't touched the ground and he gets the ball, even just the the even just the tip <laughs> across the um oh shoot. The end zone line, the what is the name of that guys? Anyway, if he even just barely crosses it, then it's a touchdown. So they call that did he he broke the plane. And a lot of times when there's a challenge, um, they will, they will, oh, what the challenge a lot of times is with the touchdown is like this guy, the ball broke the plane, but did his knees touch the ground or his elbow touch the ground before the ball broke the plane? So that is a penalty or not a penalty, but a ch actually we didn't even say challenge. Um, that is a whoops, that's an L guys. I just want you to know with my spelling. Okay, that's really bad. I gotta start over. <laughs> then I try really hard. <laughs> but I am doing I don't have a spell check. I have a I have a Sharpie. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Is it is it A N G A? Hmm, it might be Ian. Oh, you all know. Challenge. No, it's got to be E, doesn't it? Challenge, yeah. Yeah, I think it's E. Anyway, a challenge is something that a coach, they have a flag, or not a flag, I'm sorry, a flag. Is it a flag? It looks like a hanky. <laughs> it looks like a red hanky. I think they call it a flag. I think it's called a challenge flag. Anyway, if you ever see... On a broadcast, they'll just show the red, what looks like a handkerchief, but it's a red flag. I think that's what they call it. Um, onto the field. That is a coach who is challenging the last call. So sometimes if they say it's a touchdown, he'll challenge it. And then they look at it. Although I, I think now, oh, here's another one. Um, I think now they review every touchdown play. So coaches don't have to challenge those. So coaches are more challenging, like if they say it was out of bounds when the guy caught the ball. That's another. Okay, let's just go back to the challenge of a touchdown. Did I lose track of something? Broke the plane. We talked about that. I think that's clear. Okay, so one thing you hear a lot nowadays on the pod, or not podcast, broadcast, is um, look at it in look at me writing half capitals half not New York so they have people apparently in New York because they always say they're going to look at it in New York who are above <laughs> all the referees on the field I mean they like have final say and they look at plays from all different angles and slow motion and they make a decision sometimes 
on whether a play is, a, whether a challenge is good or a play. And they review every touchdown. And I think the touchdowns are all reviewed in New York. I could be wrong. I think that's right. I mean, they still sometimes come out with that box and the referees will look in the box and watch the play. So I don't think every play is reviewed in New York, but I don't know. I should have looked that up. <laughs> I just thought of it right now. So look at it in New York. Um, whew, what else did we? Oh, uh, how about, I can't remember if I discussed this. Yeah, I think I talked about that in the last video. Um, oh, I know I heard one the other day that my son's like, you should talk about that. <laughs> but this is a real random thing, but it's called an, I'd never heard this until last week, I think. It's called an octopus. <laughs> I just thought that was funny. And my son goes, he got an octopus. I didn't know what he was talking about. So apparently, I think it was um, the Bucks, the Buccaneers, uh, had a player get an octopus, and then I think they took it away. Something like that. But when octopus is, because I had never heard this term, is when a player, let's say this guy, has run it in for a touchdown. And a touchdown is worth six points. And now they could kick a field goal to get seven points, but now they've decided we're going to try for an extra two points. And that is called a conversion. And they are going to try to get an extra two points instead of the one point for a field goal. And the same guy, this guy, who ran it in for a touchdown, gets the ball and runs it in for the extra two points. So now he has scored eight points in one play. And that is called an octopus. <laughs> and I had never heard that. But it's got to be the same player got both touchdown and the extra two points. I thought that was fun. <laughs> um... In the last video, I brought up pick six. I think at the end of the video, I did explain a pick of six. But we'll just talk about it real quick because it's pretty simple. It is when the... Um... Okay, so the play is happening. And the, the quarterback throws the ball, hoping to get it to this guy. But instead, this guy jumps up, grabs the ball. So he has picked the ball. A pick is when you take the ball from the, the defense catches the ball or gets the ball from the offensive team. So he's picked it. I don't know. Should I write that down? Eh, okay, we got it. Pick. And then he runs it and manages to not get tackled and runs it in for a touchdown for the defense. So he gets six points. So that is a pick six. Um... The other one I've heard a lot is that I kind of, I don't even know if I can explain this, but it's called, they say like, oh, he's running an option route. Um, I had to look that up just because I was like, I don't know. And all the explanations seemed complicated, but I think basically what it means is that the quarterback doesn't have a like one like he's not like I'm just gonna throw it to Joe Green here I'm going to have a few options so he might hand it off to this guy to run he might throw it to him or he might throw it to him is that I don't know that I don't know but if anybody's <laughs> option route I think that's what it means. I think it's like his plan was to do this, but he took the option route and he ended up handing it to this guy because he realized this, you know, he was getting tackled or something was happening. I think that's right. Um, what else? What else? What else? I know something that is kind of important. It This one would really go more into the... Um, uh, I am actually, I think I might do a whole video on just overtime because I think 
there's enough there maybe. But because we're going into the playoffs, I think it's important <laughs> to know that during regular season, if you go into overtime, um, it's, I think they're 15 minutes. But anyway, you go into overtime and each team gets a chance with the ball during overtime. And is that right? Oh, oh wait a minute. Let me make sure I'm right about that. Let me think about that for a second. Um, see, now I think in college ball, it's like whoever scores first. Where is that in? Okay. I think I remember. Each team gets a chance with the ball. Look, I have to do a special one all on overtime because I'm not, I'm not sure. But what I will say about overtime in the playoffs is that if like this team goes in and scores and this team goes in and scores, you can't, now I'm afraid, I'm sorry, but um, you can't end overtime with a tie in playoffs. Overtime has to end with one team or the other winning. During regular season, you can end with a tie. If after the overtime, it's a tie, the game ends in a tie. But during the playoffs, because you have to have a winner, they will play multiple overtimes that they need to until they have a winner. That's all I really want to say. But do you see how overtime, because it's different in college ball than it is in... So I think there's a whole video that could be done on overtime. <laughs> oh, I know one other thing. Mm, I'm telling you, this, this is not... Or this, this video... <laughs> Okay, so you have gotten to where you're about to kick a field goal. And this is exactly how they line up. Okay, so your kicker is about to kick the field goal. And the defensive team kind of waits until time is like one second from them kicking the field goal. And their coach goes, time out. I want to call time out. And that is to kind of shake up the kicker. And it's called icing the kicker. And that happens a lot. And I'm sure all the kickers are like, yeah, I'm ready for it. <laughs> you can't ice me. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Maybe it works. So, yeah, I am writing half, half capital, half small letters. Icing the kicker. So that is when the coach calls a timeout. The coach of the opposite team calls a timeout right before the kick to kind of get in the kicker's head a little bit and make him nervous or distract him. Um, there's also a thing called a two-minute warning, and that only happens at the end of the second half and the fourth. I, I mean, second, well, yeah, second half. No, second quarter <laughs> at the half. The second quarter and the fourth quarter there is a two minute warning. Um, that's almost a whole nother thing too. That goes into too many things, but just so you know, <laughs> I have a two minute warning. Uh, let me think what else. Um, oh, I know something. So the quarterback, in order to confuse the defense, We'll do a move called a oops, shoot, pump <laughs> fake. And sometimes they're really good at it. <laughs> like you can be watching and go, oh my God, I thought I threw that ball. So what they do is kind of like go like that like and pretend like they're throwing the ball and then hand it off to somebody so that the defense might see that and go, oh my gosh, they're throwing the ball and run down here when really this guy has it and he's running with the ball over here. So that's a pump fake. And if a quarterback's really good at it, it can be kind of confusing to the defense. Um, oh yeah, and when, if, if he does a pump fake and doesn't throw it and then he gives the ball to this guy who's running, he hands the ball to him that is called a hand off. Oops. Hand off. 
Um, what else have we not? I don't know. Can you guys think of anything else? <laughs> oh, well, I would say, other than a pump fake, he might also pretend, he might hand this ball off to this guy, and then he, the quarterback, or even this guy, either one of them, might pretend like they've grabbed the ball and kind of hold it close and run. And it's like, it's called a, it's called a dummy run. And they pretend like they have the ball and run. And sometimes these guys might, or these guys might believe that he actually has the ball and start going towards him. But he doesn't. And I would think, and I don't know, I've never thought about this till this very moment, but what if the quarterback is doing, pretending he has the ball and these guys think he has the ball and tackle him, couldn't they get a giant penalty? Or is he not allowed to pretend he is? Am I wrong about that? Okay, commenters. <laughs> what happens if the quarterback hands off the ball, but then pretends to have the ball, does like a dummy run, and these guys tackle him? Won't they get penalized? And is he allowed to do that? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, okay. All right, that's, I think that's all I can think of right now. So I thought I did um, take some screenshots of a couple of comments. I thought we could kind of look through them and see if there's anything from previous NFL videos. I didn't do a lot of them, just a couple I kind of glanced at. So let's see, let me pull up my um, iPad here. Hold on, guys. Okay, what do we have? This is from a video about the Dust Bowl that I put up if you're interested. That's one from 1940s map, I think is what the video is called. That's uh, a battery video. Oh, I did a video on um, jumping your battery, <laughs> if you're curious. And I did one on making boutonnieres, if you're curious. <laughs> okay, here we go. So this Zach says, I don't know, is it okay to like read their names? I mean, they're public comments. Oh, I haven't thought about that. I guess I'll look and if they have... Hmm. I guess it's okay. I hope it's okay. All right. Um. So this person says... I'll just call him Zach because that's his name. So for safeties... Okay, we talked about safeties in the last video. It doesn't necessarily have to be the quarterback getting sacked and players tackled in the opposing team's end zone or who ran out of bounds in the end zone. Oh, I'm sorry. I read that wrong. Any player tackled in the opposing team's end zone is a safety, but a sack is the most common. Okay. Yeah. So a safety is when your quarterback, <sighs> let's see, how do I, so he's trying to, Nope, I'm doing that wrong. Hold on. Somehow they have uh, gotten the ball way down here, and they are trying to get to over here, okay? But through circumstances, I'm moving some of these guys because I don't want to set them all up. But anyway, they have... Uh... So this guy is trying to get the ball down to the side, but once he gets the ball he is in his own end zone and if these guys manage to tackle him not in his own end zone I said that wrong last time in the other team's end zone if they manage to tackle him while in the defense's team's end zone <clears throat> that's a safety am I saying that right I think I'm saying that right um and a safety is two points. But what this guy is saying is even if he had handed the ball off to this guy and they were trying to, and he ran back into his, the other team's end zone, even if they tackle him, that's a safety. If anybody from the offensive team gets tackled in the defense's team end zone, that's a safety. I believe that's what he's saying. Okay. So... Also, if a team fumbles the ball out of bounds in the opposing team's end zone, same result. Okay, so if he, if the quarterback has the ball and starts getting, 
well, let's say he, it's more likely, let's say he hands it off to this guy and he starts running it down here and drops the ball or starts getting tackled. And before his knees or elbows hit the ground, he fumbles the ball and it goes outside, um, goes out of bounds. Yeah. Then that would be a safety. Okay. Oftentimes, players who fumble in the other team's end zone will intentionally take the safety by kicking the ball out of bounds. Rather, oh, this is interesting. Rather than allowing a chance for the other team to fall onto it and get a touchdown. I've seen that before and I was like, what just happened? Yes, okay. So if this guy fumbles the ball, now the ball is laying here in the end zone. And if the this... <laughs> It's his end zone. These guys are just in it because they ended up there by circumstance. So if he drops the ball onto the field here, onto the end zone, if the guy from the defense manages to fall on that ball, it'll be a touchdown, which is worth six points. So this guy might fumble it, realize he can't pick it up in time, so he kicks it and kicks it out here. So now this team gets a safety, which is two points. So it's, you know, kind of winning the loss in that one. You know what I mean? Okay. That's a great comment. Thank you to Zach. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. And then I think this is in response. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this person says a penalty occurring in the team's own end zone can also result in a safety just for semantics sake, a penalty occurring in the team's own end zone. So he's saying the green is in their own end zone. No, they can't be in their own end zone. Wait a minute. A penalty occurring in the team's own end zone. I'll be honest, I don't quite know what that means. <laughs> a penalty occurring in the team's own end zone can also result in a safety. Oh, so he's saying... I th hmm. Mm, maybe what he's saying is... I don't know. <laughs> Un I, I'm unclear. Oh boy. What is this guy? Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. This is Schmeike. Haven't scrolled all the comments, but I can speak to ball placement as you asked about it halfway through. I'm sorry. I think I have to go a little tiny zip of my, but I'll do it off mic because I know that bugs people. Hold on. <clears throat> I told you this might be a long one. <laughs> All right. Haven't scrolled through all the comments, but I can speak to ball placement. After a play, the ball is placed in the one. Oh, I think I was asking about why when they want to set up for a field goal kick, they feel like they have to place the ball because I thought they could always place it right in the center. I think that was the question that I asked about setting up for a field goal. Okay. After a play, the ball is placed in one of three spots with respect to the width of the field. Okay. Depending on where the previous play ended. It's not this guy's writing that's slowing me down. It's my eyesight. So forgive me. I'm having trouble seeing this. <laughs> in the middle of the field, there are two. Okay. There are two parallel hash lines that mark each individual yard line. Okay, that's what we did here. These are called hash lines. They're between the 10 yards. You have hashes. Okay. And there's some here and some here, I think. All right. Where were we? D -d 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 yard lines. Okay. Uh, and they run end zone to end zone length of the field. Okay. These hash lines are roughly equidistant and divide the field into roughly equal thirds Widthwise, okay. So if you have, mine aren't obviously done correctly, but if you had them, see what he's saying is one, two, three. So your field cut into thirds, okay? Oops, sorry, understood. Um, the, I keep losing my spot. So if the prior play ends with the ball carrier being tackled or forced out of bounds, to the left of the hash mark, 
the ball is placed on the left hash of the yard. Um, left hash of the yard line where they were down for the next play. The ball is placed on the right hash line if the play ends to the right of the hash line. If the play ends between the hash lines, the ball is placed in the center of the field. So in your example of trying to set up the best ball placement for the kicker, it depends on the kicker's handedness, footedness really, but that's not a word, and their personal preference. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Generally, a lefty kicker would want the ball placed opposite from what a righty kicker would want to give them the best alignment and space to kick a field goal. Hope this helps. Yes, it does. Okay, so see what he's saying is if, because they'll kind of set the ball sometimes. Like, we start going in another direction. This is confusing. But, <laughs> like, they will intentionally down the ball right here. And that sets their kicker up. So I guess either if he's left footed or right footed, but I think also in some fields, it's like the way the wind is blowing. They'll want it a certain, they'll want it to be further this way because the wind's blowing this way. So I think we all get that. That's interesting. So yeah, so you have hash marks all the way across the field this way, and that cuts the field into thirds, which is part of that grid iron we were talking about earlier. Okay, that was great. Great comment. What's this one? <clears throat> okay, this is in response. Note that in NFL and college football, the hashes are much closer to the center in line with the field goal post. Okay, so mine might be actually kind of accurate. <laughs> um, on high school fields, though, the hashes do split the field into equal thirds. That's interesting. So in high school, it's perfectly set. But in here, it's more like with the goal post. Oh, if I didn't... Okay, let's see the other comment because I remember another comment I read that I thought was interesting. You did... Oh, this is Jack. You did an awesome job explaining. Thank you, Jack. A reason you would win the coin toss... Okay, in the last video, I asked... I talked about the coin toss and I asked, um, I didn't ask so much as said, I'm not sure why you would, uh, not choose to kick or, you know, all the reasons. There are probably a lot of reasons and I didn't know. <clears throat> so that's in response to this. A reason you would win the coin toss and kick is because you get the ball after halftime sometimes allowing you to score right before halftime uh, and then get the ball right back. Most teams kick, but you can receive to start the game off and some momentum to score right away. Okay. I, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. These are both pretty good. We'll read them both. This is Abe. You can see why the inventors originally called it football, as they probably envisioned just two teams alternating field goal kicks with the occasional miss. But once it was played, they discovered how hard it was to make a field goal, and the game's focus shifted towards touchdowns. So this is kind of interesting, and I think I might do a video at some point on the history of football. Or maybe I'll just do the history of the teams. I don't know. So that's interesting. But this guy, or no, girl, guy, girl, I don't know, Amber. One point, I shouldn't be so binary. I don't know. One point with the coin toss. You specifically get the option to choose now or choose at the beginning of the second half. Okay. Which is why you want to kick the ball to start. You should specifically say defer. Because if you say you want to kick, that is still making a choice. Whereas deferring is deferring your ability to make a choice until the second half. What? Well, that's smart. So you, so if you win the coin toss at the beginning, you say defer. And then you get to make your choice at the beginning of the second half instead of then. So if you say defer at the beginning, the other team gets to choose, though? Wouldn't that force your choice for the second half? Hmm. Hmm. I'm a little confused now that I worked it out. My <laughs> the more I think about it. 
If you say you want to kick rather than defer, then the other team still has technically not gotten their choice yet. And they can choose to receive in the second half, meaning they would get the ball to start both halves. Okay. Interesting. All right. Never heard that. Let's see. Hold on. Okay. This is chemical. I'll just call you by your first name. You missed one you missed one top of score, but it's rare and hardly relevant, so I'm not surprised it wasn't easy to find, okay? But you can score one point safety, all right? If a team is trying for a two-point conversion and then lose the ball and the defensive team recovers, leaves the end zone, and then is tackled for a safety, it only counts as one point. But you can score one point. Okay, if a team is, okay, a team is trying for the two-point conversion. All right. These are the kind of, when, whenever a number is used in a sentence, my brain shuts off. <laughs> is that weird? Okay. My husband was talking to me about rotating the tires and his, he has this new system. <laughs> I couldn't, it was like he was speaking another language. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. It's about numbers. But you can score one point safety. Okay, if the team is trying for a two-point conversion, okay, so they are trying for a two-point conversion, and then lose the ball, okay, and the defensive team has recovered the ball. I assume he's saying and then leaves the end zone. So they must have been in the end zone. They recovered it. And then is tackled for a safety. It counts as one point. They left the end zone and then they were tackled for a safety. I don't know if I understand what he's saying here. I'm going to have to look this up. There's something I'm not quite getting. How would they be tackled for a safety? They got, so they left the end zone, but then what got pushed back into the end zone? Or you're saying they left the end zone and they were tackled? That counts as a different kind of safety because they picked it up in the end zone? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. All right, that's interesting. I'm going to have to Google that one. <laughs> I don't know. I can't work it out on my own here. <clears throat> okay, just to clarify, a safety is when the quarterback is brought down in his own end zone, not the other team's end zone. Yes, he's in his own end zone. Oh, that's what I'm doing wrong with this one. They're going for the two-point conversion. They lose the ball. The defensive team recovers it. Okay, I must have misspoke about this one. So a safety is when a quarterback is brought down in his own end zone, not the other team's end zone. I know you probably know that, but you worded it differently. Is that, did I word it, did I word it wrong? Let me think about this. What is he saying? Uh, safety. Yeah, he's in his own end zone. Right, because he's trying to get the ball down here to get into the other team's end zone. So he's in his own end zone and gets tackled. Yeah, okay. I I think I knew that. I don't. All right. Um this looks complicated. Let's see. Connor says fun bits on scheduling. This goes back to the video about the um teams how they get to playoffs. Uh all the divisions and everything. Fun bits on scheduling. Each team will play its own division member twice, one home and one away. And then a team will play a different division in its own conference and play that whole division. Mm -hmm. And then it will play a division of a different cardinal direction of the other conference. So what he means there is you have AFC North and AFC South. So they would be, uh, cardinal direction is like North, South, East, West. So they would be playing a different card. So like AFC North would play AFC South. <clears throat> it 
it will apply a division of a different cardinal direction of the oh other conference i'm sorry so it would be afc north playing the um i'm blanking it nfc <laughs> yeah north or south or whatever okay and the last three games are by the previous season's rankings so you get a super bowl rematch during the season which we had the um eagles played the chiefs earlier this year i think the chiefs won i think so or a battle of the teams with the top two draft picks oh okay and this person uh I guess his name's Reeve Artillery. Great video. Yeah, thank you. Uh, there are now 17 regular season games as of, as of 2021 season. Okay, 17. I don't know how many I said. I don't remember. The playoffs begin with 14 of the 32 teams making the playoffs. Seven from each conference. Okay. Uh, division. Okay. Um, Danny says the three wild cards in each conference are simply the best three teams to not win a division. Okay. Yeah. Wild cards are simply the best three teams to not win a division. Hold on. Yeah. So you have, you know, uh, the East, West, why did I start with East West? That's dumb. Hold on. Is it bad to use my sleeve? Oh, it didn't work. Oh, forget it. <laughs> yeah, I see what he's saying. So, the three wild guards in each conference are simply the best three teams to not win a division. Okay. So, you have like right now, I think the Lions have won their division. Or maybe they didn't. I can't remember. And I think the Ravens have won their division. So they're going to the playoffs right now. So then you have the other three teams are kind of in the hunt or whatever to get to be the wild card. Does that? I think that's right. So yeah, so like, uh, well, I wish I had my cards for the other. Oh, well, anyway, you guys probably already know all that. Could be all second place teams or sometimes a division is so strong that the third place team also gets in oh okay I see so we're not talking about the conference we're talking about the division okay winning the division has priority over the team's record meaning the top wild card with a 12-5 record would have to be the the road team against a division winner with a 10-7 record Division winners get an automatic home game. The best division winner gets a first round bye. Oh, that's something we didn't talk about. A bye or a bye week in football means that you get a week off. So you might play a Sunday and not play again until not the following Sunday, but the next Sunday. That's called a bye week. And I'm only spelling it by like this because he did. I would have assumed it's by as in <laughs> by like biannual, but he spelled B-Y-E, so maybe that's correct. I'm not sure. But yeah, that's like every other week. So you get a week off. And it's nice to have a buy before playoff games because it means your team gets a chance to take a rest and recover from injury. So that's a very uh, good thing. Where are we on this one? Um, a -da -da. First round buy and home field advan advantage the rest of the way. Also, having home field advantage means you're playing at your own home stadium, which is nice because your home crowd is usually going to you know, be super loud and makes it hard for the other team to communicate. And it just ups your, you know, enthusiasm. And that's why they play. I don't know if that's why. Let's just scratch that. But they play Super Bowl at a stadium. Oh, I could be wrong about this, but I think it's at a stadium that is neither team's home field. But maybe that's not true because like this year, I think they're playing Super Bowl in Vegas. What if the Vegas team happened to win? 
So maybe I'm wrong about that. <laughs> okay. I don't know about that, but they, oftentimes it's not their home field. <clears throat> it's not a perfect system, but it usually evens itself out. With that, go Seahawks. Okay. Go Seahawks. All right. That's it. That's all the comments. Um, I mean, there were a lot of great comments, but that just were some I saw that I thought, okay, let's see what they're saying. Uh, all right. I'm trying to think if there's any other really important, we can always come back and do more. Cause I think there's a lot, <laughs> there could be a lot, <laughs> but I have a new phone today that has greater memory. So I was sort of wanting to try out a very long video and we'll see how long it takes to load up. I'm over an hour. <laughs> I don't know how many of you have stuck around to the end, <laughs> but I hope you have. And if you're watching football, I hope your team wins, you know, unless they're the team I don't want to win, <laughs> but I won't say that. <laughs> all right, go team. Thanks for watching. I'll just put all this stuff away and, uh,